Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We're continuing our Budget and Strength Commander series. And we're looking, still looking at the EDH Rec uh, Budget Legendary Commanders this time. So we're doing the EDH Rec themes and we're looking at Legendary here. So the Legendary theme, again, it, on a card it's called a Super Type. So the subtypes are things like Artifact, uh, Creature, Land, etc. All of those, I believe there's seven of them. And legendary is a super type. So those are subtypes and this is a super type. So the legend rule applies to all legendary permanents. This rule states that you may only have one of each legendary under your control at a time. So any kind of legendary permanent, you can have one of them going at once. That's it. So yeah, that can be a little tricky if you're like making copies or something. The copies, you gotta make sure either they get sacrificed right away and you want them to be sacrificed or um, they, uh, they have something that specifies the copy loses legendary. So there are some effects that do that. Uh, legendary spells are not limited to creatures. All card types can be legendary, so everything can be legendary. Since legendary is a super type, these cards will also have one or more subtypes. That means a deck based on both legendary and a kindred type is possible for double bonuses. This is a very effective strategy, right? So if you if you're doing legendary and like dragon or legendary and really anything zombie legendary frog legendary whatever you can actually get a lot out of that um so that's something to always consider when you're building in the 99 okay so these are pretty much the staples you want to put in like every legendary deck if you can Hero's Podium, 5 mana for a Legendary Artifact. Each Legendary Creature you control gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other Legendary Creature you control. That gets out of hand fast, okay? That really does. And pay X and tap to look at the top X cards of your library. You may reveal, reveal a Legendary Creature card from among them, put the rest into your hand or put it into your hand, put the rest on, on the bottom of your library in a random order. So yeah, basically just a very big, uh, not quite scry effect, but yeah, kind of fetching out whatever you want from hopefully pretty, however many X men is from the top of the deck. Um, hopefully a good amount. Second up is Urza's Ruinous Blast. So this is four in the white, so also converted mana cost five. Um, this is a legendary sorcery. Exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. So yeah, if you've got all legendary stuff, just exile everything that isn't legendary, non-land permanent. So you don't have to worry about like exiling your basic lands or anything like that. 42 cents, sorry. I didn't say for the, for the first one. Here's Podium at 25 cents only. Urza's Runus Blast is 42 cents. Finally, Relic of Legends. I actually did a Dominaria United opening and I got two of these. So I'm kind of pumped because I think it's really a great uh, little mana rock. Three for an artifact and tap one to add one mana of any color. Not too bad. The really impressive thing, tap an untapped legendary creature you control, add one mana of any color. So basically you wait until like the end step of the player before you and you just tap all your creatures down, right? As soon as their combat's finished, you're safe. You just tap down all your creatures or your hopefully all legendary creatures and then you can just start casting like crazy. Um, it's basically any legendary creatures a mana rock at that point. Um, and you can do it without like worrying about defense if it's right before your turn too. Uh, very underutilized, the fact that this is just barely up to $2 now. It's, this came out like two years ago. It's now up to only $2, that's nuts. Number five. Uh, Shanid Sleeper Scourge. So he is one red, white, black Mardu. I love my Mardu, that's for sure. So that's exciting. He's in 1,726 cent decks, which is a pretty good, uh, pretty, I almost said cents instead of decks, but anyway, pretty good number there. Um, 
He has he is a two fourth menace. Four mana for two fourth menace, not great, but okay. Other legendary creatures you control have menace. So anthem effect menace all legendaries. Hey, not too shabby. Whenever you play a legendary land or legendary spell, you draw a card and lose one life. So you are losing some life, right? You're going to keep that card draw engine going, which is great, but it's going to cost you a little bit of life, which isn't a big deal. But if you're like low on life, you might start having to worry near, you know, if it's near the end of the game, you might be like, oh, am I just going to like basically take myself out of the game by uh, casting? That would not be ideal, right? That would be very bad. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is, uh, again, I, it has all this mana stuff. I wouldn't like focus on that too much when building. That's one little note I want to point out as well. But anyway, 62 cents only. So, wow, not bad. Okay, my recommendations here are that the Cursed, three and white black, again, so this is our Orzov, a three, three, death touch, lifelink. Five for a three, three, death touch and lifelink is a nice combo, I guess. Other legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Oh, and they all have menace. So yeah, oh boy. I guess this, in this deck, this would be a 3-3 three, three Death Touch Lifelink Menace. Not too shabby, that's sounding better for 5 mana. But anyway, 25 cents for that one. Aon Fearless Knight, again, 2 uh, red-white, so this is Boros now. A 3 4 Haste for 4. Again, it's going to be Haste and Menace in this deck, so not too bad. So when it enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls with greater power. Legendary creatures you control gain protection from each um, of that creature's colors until end of turn. Protection from each of the c creature's colors until end of turn. Um, so that that's probably going to be able to like... Again, you've got hopefully three different colors going. Um, that's going to be protection from probably most of the board, right? If they've got like mono green or mono blue, that's going to be trouble. But otherwise, remember any creature that's like dual colored, that counts as like being the protection from whatever color. So you're probably going to be able to like get a fair amount of creatures through on people, uh, legendary creatures through on people. So that's potentially a win con there, right? It's a little haphazard, a little janky, but it's there. Anyway, 50 cents. And finally, Rakdos joins up. So a three, red, uh, black, red. Um, it's Rakdos, the color, unsurprisingly. Legendary enchantment this time. So when it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with two additional plus one, plus one counters on. So you're just gonna throw something straight back into the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. That's a very good start. And in a legendary deck, you probably got a lot of things that like have a higher mana cost where that's going to be worthwhile as well. And when it uh, on its own, I mean, as like if you considered it compared to like an instant or something. Whenever a legendary creature you control dies, Rectus joins up, deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. So if there's like a board wipe or something, great. They're just gonna like take themselves out of the game. So basically you're gonna be like, you wanna use removal? Go for it, try your luck. Uh, board wipe, removal, whatever. Um, you're, you're just like basically taking yourself out of the game is what you're doing. Uh, so this is just, for 48 cents, this is scary. This is a threat, I like it. Number four, Nib-Mizzet, sorry, Nib-Mizzet, nib Guild Pack. So he is Wooberg, right? Five converted mana costs. He's all five colors to cast. Um, flying, Hexproof from Multicolored. He's a 6-6, six, six. so a 6-6 six, six for five. It's not bad, but it's also five flying protection from Multicolored. It costs all five colors to cast them though, so that's a bit of a pain in the butt. But anyway, 
whenever he uh, he deals combat damage to a player, not going to be that hard, right? Two forms of evasion already. If you really wanted to play it safe, you could put, get another form of evasion and just be like, yeah, no, you're not not blocking them. Anyway, um, <clears throat> whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it deals X damage to any tar target. Target player draws X cards and you gain X life. So, X damage to any target. So, you, you want player removal, creature removal, whatever you want. Just, uh, yeah, there it is. Where X is the number of different colors, pairs among permanents you control that are exactly two colors. So what's important in this deck is getting permanents down that have multiple colors. A lot of them are probably going to be creatures, but it's nice that it doesn't specify creature, it's permanent. So if you've got dual colored enchantments, dual colored artifacts, whatever it is, you can get a lot of value out of that. And remember, there are 10 combinations of dual colors. So you can potentially get, you're probably not going to have 10 on the battlefield at once, but if you do, it would be 10 damage to anything you want, draw 10 cards, gain 10 life. Just for him getting an attack through. Um, whoa, 29 cents only. Okay, so here's my recommendations. Two, and you got your white, black, or sorry, white. Blue black, I'm looking right at it. Blue black, so your Demir option. He's a 3 4 with Ward 2. Ward is flawed, but it's better than nothing. I always say that. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. This is just, this ability is so amazing. This is just like an off switch for any kind of graveyard deck. Um, this is just all you need. Um, this is gonna, like, totally throw a whole bunch of decks just into like absolute chaos like it's going to turn them off at the beginning of each end step each each end step create a what x11 black creature token or sorry rat creature tokens with this creature can't gains plus one for plus one for each other rat you control uh remember he's a rat as well so even if you only create one you've got one two two already and they're going to keep just making them, making them, making them. Even on other players' turns, you're still making them. Okay? Uh, where X is the number of creatures your opponents control that controlled that were exiled this turn. So, yeah, you, anytime the, uh, anything that dies goes to the graveyard, exile, exile, exile. So you're exiling everything that they won't probably want to get back and you're getting bonus out of it. It's just a real salt on wounds kind of card. I love it. 74 cents. Okay, General Ferris Rodrick, or sorry, Rockrick. Rocky Rick. I don't know how to say it. I, I got to practice saying the names out loud. Anyway, one red, white, Boros. So hex proof from monocolored. Great little, uh, great little ability there. And whenever you cast a multicolored spell, which is going to be hopefully almost every spell, create a four for a red and white golem artifact creature token. So you're just going to keep throwing these four four golems in every time you cast probably like any spell. Um, it's going to add up fast. 55 cents only. Finally, this one I love. I, I always look... I have a few of these, and I was like, I hope I can find a deck to slot them into. Anyway, so Gold Forge Throthrex is uh, white and a blue. Okay, so our Azorius here. Flying Lifelink 1 3. Eh, sure. For two, not bad. Each legendary permanent you control has Ward 2. Each, not each other, so it does do itself as well. Um. And yeah, it's just gonna do so much work. Like everyone's down on word, I know, but better than nothing. Anyway, 25 cents. Number three. Okay, Sisse Weatherlight Captain. So she is in 2,610 decks. Uh, decent number. And I think this is all the most well-known card on this list by a fair margin. Um, this is the only one I have sitting in a binder anyway. 
I might have the Niv Mesut. I can't remember. I think I have a different one. Or a couple. Anyway. Bah. So, again, two and a white for a 2-2? Two, two? Sounds bad. But, let's read. So, she gets plus one, plus one for each color among legendary permanents you control. Legendary permanents, again, not creature. So, up to plus five, plus five. If you have all five colors, she's plus five, plus five. She is another Wooberg one. Because of her ability, she will be Wooberg. Again, for Wooberg, search the library for a legendary permanent card with converted mana cost less than Sissy's power. Put that card onto the battlefield. Not to hand. Straight to the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. Uh, straight to the battlefield. Okay, so one main thing to keep in mind is that you want to boost her power a lot. All right? It's all about boosting her power. She does have that herself. You can get her up to a 7-7 just by having other legendary permanents with different colors. But we want to make sure, right? We want to have that early and we want to just be able to throw something on it and be like, okay, now she's huge. And again, just increase to the point where you can cast absolutely anything out of your deck by paying that Wooberg and just being done. Anyway, 196 for her. Okay, so Primeval's Glorious Rebirth for 5 White Black. It's, that is pricey, okay? A Legendary Sorcery, but... Return all Legendary Permanent cards from the, your graveyard to the battlefield. Remember, as soon as you do that, you're getting all your stuff back, and you're just, like, making your commander all, like, giving your commander, like, plus 5, plus 5 again, and making it so she can pretty much probably cast almost anything out of your deck. Uh, the downside to this is that she does need, like, if you're not giving her some kind of, like, equipment boost, she does need all five colors to be able to cast this from the deck. But she can probably, again, we're going to throw an equipment on her, and then uh, that's not really a problem. You'll be able to do this just on, like, an activation of an ability for five mana. So that's kind of using it as, like, mana reduction as well. Anyway, 69 cents. Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard. Okay, this is really nice because it is only red-green. So even when she first comes into the battlefield, if you can activate that Wooberg ability, you can go to get this right away. And she'll already... I guess she's a, 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 a legendary already. But even if she didn't have any other bonuses, she'd be able to get this. And it'll give her two colors. So give her plus two, plus two right away. Uh, you can sacrifice him. Legendary creatures you control get plus one, eh, and gain indestructible until end of turn. Gain indestructible just at instant speed. So if someone plays a board wipe, you're like, great. I'll uh, I'll sacrifice him, and uh, boom, we're all set, right? That's your counter right there, and it keeps your commander all juiced up, and it keeps everything on your board intact, and you're just going to keep being able to like pull things out of your deck and be like, yeah, I don't care. And if he, even if you do sacrifice him, you can cast a Primeval's Glorious Rebirth to just throw him back in the battlefield and do it all over again. Um, ooh, anyway, 50 cents. Finally, we want to cre increase her power, right? So how do we do that? Black Blade Reforged. Only two mana, 69 cents. And the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. Equip Legendary Creature 3 or Equip 7. Again, we're going to be putting on our commander, so we're going to pay, pay the 3. And uh, that's worth it, right? By the time you cast this, I think you're going to have at least, you know, a good few uh, lands on the battlefield already. So um, that's probably going to be a pretty big bump. Well worth the 69 cents anyway. Number 2. Havi the All-Father. All okay. Havi? Havi? I always think of, um... What is it? Uh, not Lock, Sock, and Two Smoking Barrels. The one with Brad Pitt. Uh, anyway, Avi is in that one. They're like, Avi! Uh, anyway, Havi. It's not the same as Avi, obviously. And this is not helpful, so I'm going to stop talking about that. Uh... So we got three red, green, white. Okay, so Naya 
Now your business. I said it. Anyway. So six mana for a six six? Yeah, okay. He is only in 370 decks. This is so low for the second rated one. Uh, the second rated one often seems to be one that has like lower a lower number of decks, but that's crazy low. Okay, so uh, have the the All Father has indestructible as long as there are four or more historic cards in your graveyard. Again, historic is artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Okay, so you can have some sagas, have some sacrificeable or uh, sacrificeable artifacts you can sac sacrifice. Or, yeah, just rely on legendaries going to the graveyard. Um, there's actually a lot of great artifacts to be able to sacrifice that you can uh, get a lot of extra bonus out of. So if you're doing that and you're making your commander indestructible, I, that's just a really good combination right there. Anywho, that's only the first half. And Sage Project. Okay, whenever Javi or another legendary creature you control dies, return target legendary creature with lesser mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Okay, so the main thing here is that you want to have a whole bunch of different legendaries, and you also want them to have a variety of uh, mana costs. Sorry, legendary creatures, I should say, not just legendaries, but legendary creatures with an assortment of mana costs, so that when a higher one goes down, you can keep kind of go from like six to five to four. You want to be able to keep activating this ability. If you have a whole, if you have like a six cost and then a bunch of two cost, you can use that twice, right? The six cost goes, or once, sorry, the six cost goes and then the two goes and then you're done. There's no more to pull out. So it's about having a very large variety. Anyway, 34 cents. Okay. This is one I'm including not because it's legendary, because it's just my favorite card. I think this is like my go-to uh, staple in green. Trail Tracker Scout is one in a green. You can tap him to add one mana. Mana Dork. Raccoon Mana Dork. Anyway, whenever you expend eight, return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, expend eight just means use eight mana. Legendary decks are going to use a lot of mana. Expend 8 is not something that is going to be like super rare or something. Also, that's put one permanent. It doesn't say legendary, it doesn't say, you know, it doesn't say artifact, it doesn't say creature, it doesn't say whatever. Just permanent. Any permanent card, boom, back in your hand. Um, the flexibility of that is so crazy. And it's only 99 cents right now. I really should order a bunch of these because I know this is going to be like a $5 card in no time. Anyway, Safi, Eric's daughter. Um, so, uh, Selesnia, green white. You can sacrifice her. Again, double useful right there. And when the creature is put into the graveyard from the uh, um, this turn, return target card to the, to the battlefield. So, yeah. Basically, you sacrifice this, and then you sit, you pick something like when that thing goes to the graveyard, you're just going to put it straight back into the battlefield. And when it goes to the graveyard, if it's a legendary with higher mana cost, it's going to pull something else out with Havi's ability, and then it's going to return to the battlefield as well. And yeah, you can just, just probably keep doing that, right? You can keep using whatever higher mana cost uh, creature you have, legendary creature you have. To keep pulling Safi out, and Safi will keep sacrificing. Safi sacrificing is also a historic in your graveyard. So if you've got like three and you need the last one to give your commander indestructible, just on a like as a reaction, you can do that just by like boom, sacrifice. Okay, he's indestructible now. What you gonna do? So anyway, 96 cents, that went up a bit. Finally, Kadrick, Soul Kindler, he is Red, white, two red, white, sorry. And for a 4-3, eh, legend rule doesn't apply to tokens you control. This is an amazing ability to have in a token deck. I would have it in a lot of decks, actually. Whenever another non-token uh, legendary permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, create a token that's a copy of it. 
So you can just start copying these legendaries, right? You can just start copying, 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 and then, yeah. Of course, the token copy has zero mana cost, so if it gets destroyed, you're not pulling anything back out of the graveyard, unfortunately, but... Uh, that token gains haste, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. It is so easy to, like, use this to just keep going, setting off ETBs or entering effects, I should say. ETB isn't a thing anymore. Entering is. And so, it, just very, very abusable, and for one extra mana, it's just not that expensive for the value. Anywho, 76 cents. Number one. Okay, Ratha Drabic. I practiced that one. So, of Urborg, I think I did it right. 3,660 decks. Um, for, that's a lot, but it's also the number one. For number one, that's actually quite low. I think Legendary is underplayed. It is a pretty awesome thing to go with, like, just because, especially if you're going, like, with this commander, you could do Legendary Zombie and just have a really crazy zombie legendary deck. Um, there's a lot of build options there. Okay, so he is a 2, white, black, Orzov for a 3-3. Three, three. Vigilance, Ward 2. What I always say about Ward supplies here. <clears throat> Ward's Ward. Other zombies you control have Vigilance. You kinda don't worry about zombies going to the graveyard. Oh, good, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm all, uh, yeah, my stomach's great. Whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary, and it is a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. That's amazing, partly because then you can take your whatever just went to the graveyard, throw it back in the battlefield, and, uh, hey, no problem. The other one isn't legendary, so, uh, there's no conflict. Um, the fact that it makes them not only come into the battlefield as an extra copy, but that copy is, uh, not legendary. It loses legendary. That's kind of crazy, even. Uh, again, abusing entering effects and death effects because you're just gonna be able to do that so, so much with this commander that it's almost ridiculous. Uh, 88 cents. Okay, so we've got Shake. I actually, I don't have any zombies on this. I'm now realizing. Uh, great job, Joe, yeah. Shake Cormac, again, one, uh, a white and a black for a one, one, yeah. Pay one, permanent zero to opponent's control, lose hexproof, indestructible protection, and shroud, sorry, and ward until end of turn. This you can use politically, right? You can just like, if someone else wants to deal with the problem the table has, you're like, yeah, I can just turn off all of its protections, no problem. Well, you know what I mean. All of its defenses, just switch it off. Done, no problem. Um, you can kind of be everyone's friend with this, well, except for one player's friend, but anyway. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes target of a spell or ability you control, put a bounty counter on that creature. Whenever a creature with a bounty counter on it dies, put two plus one plus one counters on Shea Cormac. That's really awesome just because you're probably going to end up with a, like, two-two zombie version of the Shea Cormac, and you can just potentially keep throwing plus two plus two counters on the zombie, and the zombie is going to get out of control big. Um, it's going to have Vigilance, which is always a nice combo. Um, 25 cents only. Junji, the Midnight Sky 3. Black, black, legendary creature. Dragon Spirit, okay. Flying Menace. Okay, Flying and Menace already, so you're going to throw Vigilance on that when the token, you know, the zombie token copy becomes a... Uh, or when it, it starts to exist, yeah. So when it, uh, when it dies, choose one. Each opponent discards two cards and loses two life. Whew. That's mean. 
Put target non-dragon creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, you lose two life. So you can steal something out of someone's graveyard, and then the zombie copy of this might, you know, if that gets taken out, you can do it again. That's also great for board wipes because like your board, the, the board wipe comes and you're like, okay, I'll just take something out of someone else's graveyard, throw it on mine. Whatever is, you know, the most impressive creature, I'm just throwing into my battlefield and then you've got your blocker. You probably maybe even got a very impressive creature as well. So, uh, super awesome little ability there. 169. Geheni Undying Partisan. Okay, uh, I can't read fast now, all of a sudden. Two and a black. Okay, I'm gonna drink a little water. There you go. Much better for 2-2 two, two with haste. Yeah. It's okay. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Geheni Undying Partisan. So again, the zombie copy is going to have that, and it's just going to keep getting bigger, bigger, bigger. That's a great little ability. Sacrifice another creature. Gehenny gains indestructible until end of turn. Once again, board wipe counter, right? Also, you're going to be able to like double all those death triggers if a board someone does use a board wipe. Just wipe out all of your creatures, or your legendary creatures. You're going to make zombie co token copies of them. And then the zombie token copies are going to be destroyed. And then, uh, double death trigger. And he's going to be indestructible, so, uh, he's going to survive. Um, mean, mean, mean. 31 cents only. He's way down in price. I gotta buy that him. Uh, way too useful. Please hit like and subscribe. It really does help a lot. Um, I gotta add a like thing because I gotta neg people about that. Anyway, the list. Okay, so uh, Shanid Sleeper Scourge, 62 cents. Niv Mizzet Guild Pact is 29 cents only. Sisse Weather Like Captain is 196, just under our $2 list, our $2 mark. My hair's been all messed up. Oh, good. Havi, the Allfather, 34 cents. I still feel like I'm saying it wrong. Retta Drabek of Urborg. Come on with the names, wizards. Anyway, 88 cents. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Take it easy.